And here we are at the Frankensteiner Show at the Inova County Fairgrounds, 2000, October 2012. One of the biggest shows ever held at the Anoka Fairgrounds. A big surprise to all, and a, certainly a lot of fun for everybody. Yeah, Dawson, welcome to the Frankensteiners. We're at the Anoka Fairgrounds. Yeah, das is good turnout. Anyway, enough of that jazz. What a beautiful day. Excellent turnout. Lots of cars, muscle cars, hot rods, mods, anything you want to think of, it's here. And we couldn't ask for a better day. And as lineups coming by, we've got anything you want to see. Trucks, cars, hot rods, mods, like I said again. And uh, just viewing a couple of the cars. And that looks like an excellent paint job on that Ford. And behind them, we've got an old, old car. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I have stand corrected. That's a Chevy. Oh, what a beautiful truck. Excellent. Too bad the owner wasn't there to interview. But uh, we're going to get a closer look at this truck here in just a second. Excellent paint job. Fantastic. Clean, clean, clean all around. I'm sure the owner takes a lot of pride in that truck. And here's something. Like I said, there's, every, there's something for everybody here. From new to old to rare to expensive and uh, we're looking at some of the expensive stuff right there excellent car modded airbags I think uh, when we talked to the owner he said he had a little bit of interior work to do yet but uh, oh yeah as you can see he's got some more work to do but uh, it's looking pretty good so far And here's one of uh, here's one of the uh, big block Cadillac engines. I believe that's a 500 cubic inch. Actually, this is my 1960 Cadillac DeVille. I actually purchased out of Oregon. I'm Jesse Osborne, Ham Lake, and I purchased this 1960 Cadillac out of Oregon three years ago. And it was 100% original, solid car. And one thing about me is I really can't keep anything original. So I went through it and put my own touch onto it. And kind of went a little bit farther than I planned on going. Um, I built the whole suspension myself, C notch the frame channel, everything. Uh, uh, on the, the rims are actually one off bond speed rims. On the fronts, it's 22s. On the rears, it's 18s. Uh, on the interior, I actually built a custom console. Uh, the interior, the fiberglass console, I built on my own. Um, I have probably 300 hours just into the console alone. Uh, the speakers are all kicker speakers with a Pioneer console or Pioneer monitor. Uh, the switch box is ABS switch box, and actually, as I'll get to later, is I put a lot of the features on the car I put into the artwork on the exterior. The tail end of the car actually had all the bumpers and everything rechromed by Keystone. Um, the, I put, redid the rear tail lights on there and put some, cut down the actual bullets on there to make them fit and look like they belong. That's kind of the theme of the cars. I don't want to go too far with it that it doesn't look like Cadillac would actually factory. And like I said, there's something for everyone. Check out this Dodge RT. Wow. Just can't, uh, can't describe it with enough words hot pink and black and looks like we've got a uh, it's a 64 Ford convertible excellent nice chrome everything is shiny on that car and and a convertible plus and here we've got one of our famous rat rods that we see at all the car shows 
Uh, I actually kind of think these are neat. Uh, it's kind of a homemade, you know, throw it together, you know, weld stuff on. I think they're cool. I like the seats too. I think it'd be kind of a rough ride though. Uh, my name is Diane Thorpe. My husband and I, uh, John, own the 57 Olds 88 Holiday Coupe, purchased in 1995 out of Canton, Ohio. It's been in this confirmation for two years, and this year we've been nominated for uh, Custom of the Year from MSRA. It is essentially um, a mild custom, and we like to refer to it as a nostalgia custom. It's a car we would like to have built in the early 60s had we the means to do so. It retains its original 371 um, engine, delivers 350 horsepower. It has the J2 conversion on it, which gives us three carbs. It has its original hydromatic transmission. The paint job is um, DuPont hot hues. The gold being called uh, desert sand in a pearl. The brown on the bottom is um, uh, called raisin cane. It's a mild metallic. Um, it's offset with a candy orange stripe, which is repeated on the dashboard. The inside is also uh, a custom interior, um, a wide rolling pleat. Um, done in what we like to call uh, cultured leather, in other words, vinyl. <laughs> um, okay, my husband has done most of the design work. The um, heavy metal work was done by Car Creations in Fridley. The uh, finished body and paint was done by Paint by Shane. Interior done by Todd Staples Upholstery in Elk River. Two Hemi, Anoka, uh, S10 frame, 700 horsepower. My grandpa just flipped it and had to replace the whole body on it. Got it ready last night. Yeah. It's a rat rod. It's been on the road for almost a year now. Um, my grandpa had the body of it sitting around for 40 years, the motor sitting around for 30, and just got them connected last year. They're now running. The motor was done by Magnum Superchargers over the winter and everything has been customized since then. I don't know. I don't think the phone works. All right, and we're looking at a uh, 50 Chevy and uh, old bone speed shop. So uh, stop on and visit them. <laughs> I think their uh, their business is probably booming. A lot of hot rods here, and I'm sure all these guys need a little extra help. Nobody can do it on their own. Oh, and here's another collection of rat rods. Love these things. 
look at all the the trinkets and all the extra welding and I, I i would venture to guess that these guys grabbed extra and spare metal out of their backyards just to weld onto the car i like it And that looks like it's a Ford. And as you can tell, there's some new with the old. Really neat. Uh, my name is Jameis Flood. I'm from Philly, Minnesota. This is my 1923 Ford T-Bucket. Uh, me and my father built it four and a half years ago from the ground up. It's got a custom frame, so we don't have a suicide front end. It's actually extended two feet more. It's got a 350 Chevy with about 500 horsepower, a two-speed power glide, and a custom skull on the rear end. All he's missing is the duck decoys. No decoys on it, huh? Hi, I'm Monty. I'm David. How you we're, doing? Uh, we're filming for classics and uh, muscle cars for okay. uh, QC TV. Okay. And uh, we're just uh, just get, want to get some information on your vehicle here. Okay. So, what is your name? I'm David Mulder. I'm a uh, minister, and I do this full time. Full time ministry. Okay, and, and it's, uh, where are you from? Hastings, Minnesota. Hastings, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, can you tell us about the truck a little bit? Yes, it's a 41 Chevy pickup, and it's a fishing truck. You know, uh, Jesus said, come with me, I'll make you fishers of men, and that's what we're doing here. But, <laughs> but um, um, you know, like me, I'm kind of old and crusty, but I got a new heart, and that's, that's the way this is. It's old on the outside, but it's brand new on the inside, if you want to come look. Oh, we got a brand new inside on it. Oh, wow. Oh, check this out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, oh, that surprised me. Oh, yeah. That's, that was that's, a shocker. Like I, I'm uh, thinking about maybe going to uh, St. Louis this next weekend, but I've gone all over the Midwest with it. It's uh, about 20 miles a gallon going 75. Right. And then, uh, so what motor you got in there? It's an LT1 Corvette engine. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh, I've got the same. Yeah, I've got a couple of wagons with that same motor in it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. heck of a motor. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It, it. It's been so trouble free uh, I've had to rewire the, the, the truck to fit that you sure, know but sure but it's really really good it's got a uh, s10 front clip from here up new disc brakes and control arms and oh nice new 700 r4 transmission power and, uh, steering oh yeah air okay, conditioner good it's got a got a, a zr1 posi rear end in it with disc brakes <laughs> so it, it drives great it's a right. one finger down the highway you know but, yeah. some sort of heavy equipment or a uh, like a tractor trailer yeah, that's my guess. Wow, it might even be a Detroit diesel because it looks like it's, well, let's see the other side. I don't know if it's turbo or if it's supercharged. If it's supercharged, it's a Detroit. It's turbo, but that, uh, I, I don't know. I'm guessing that's a semi or that's out of heavy equipment. I don't know, let me look at the valve cover and I'll tell you for sure.
actually I think this is a school bus engine because the shift the shifter in the cab looks like what they got on the new automatic uh, school buses with the Allison transmission behind them. I don't know if the guy was here we'd be able to ask him but that's what it looks like to me. Monty and uh, we're doing a show for uh, QC TV it's called uh, Classics and Muscle Cars and uh, you are? Darlene Scow. And where are you from, Darlene? Coon Rapids. Coon Rapids. Okay. And then uh, what kind of vehicle are we looking at here? That's a 65 Ford truck with a 460 engine in it. Oh, yeah. Okay, 460. I'm familiar with those. And uh, how long have you had the truck? Um, we probably had it for about 15, 20, almost 20 years, I guess. Okay. And then you've been working on it that long? Or well, yeah. Got it done actually, right away? no, no. Our son bought it when he was um, in high school, and he thought the transmission went out on it. And my husband knew differently, so then my husband bought it from him, and we've been working it, on it ever since. Okay. You know, automatic or stick? Stick. Okay. So it's the four-speed uh, Dana? I take that back. It is automatic. Oh, it is automatic. So I'm it's sorry. C6. Yep. Okay. Sure. Sure. Really nice truck. And now our son wants it back. Now your son wants it back. Because it's all fixed up. But that's not happening. A little too late, right? Yeah. <laughs> a few dollars short. Well, isn't that, isn't that called, uh, I can't remember what they call that, but when you leave something somewhere for too long, uh, just uh, just kind of becomes yours? Yes. Oh, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but we've had a lot of fun with it, so. Yeah, it looks like it.
drive truck. So it's got a two-speed gearbox and, uh, tra and a transfer case in it. One of these levers is for the gearbox, to, for the high and low, and the other one is for the, well, I guess they're both for the transfer case, high and low, and then two-wheel, four-wheel drive. So the truck will go through just about anything. The other things, it's got a, it's got a hand throttle. <laughs> to control the speed. And uh, this knob was added at some other time to run a pump. Um, at one time it belonged to an oil company, and I believe that they had a tank on the back and they used this to run a pump. It's disconnected now, it's just there. I couldn't bear just to take it out and have a hole in the dash. So um, It's got a crank out windshield. That's the air conditioning. <laughs> Sucker opens up for you. Yeah. Um, the wipers are vacuum operated wipers that operate off of these little knobs. You operate, the vacuum, man. Yep. you operate them separately. There's one on each side. They seem to work well, though I don't drive the truck in the rain. It's got your standard gauges, oil pressure, heat, um, amps and fuel. All that seems to work. And it's got an aftermarket add-on Mopar heater here that, that really cranks out the heat. Um, it's been repainted and I had to get the mouse and mess out of it and everything, but it's a pretty good heater on it. So. It's the first old vehicle that I ever bought. Um, I've really enjoyed having this truck. It's a pretty simple truck. It was a farm truck. It came from, I believe it came from Austin, Minnesota before I got it. So it's, um, it's a three quarter ton pickup, two wheel drive. It's got a small, um, what's called a Y block engine in it. I believe it's a 232, something in that range, the smallest Y block that they came out with. Um, the truck, Again, I, I bought it all painted like this. This is the original color that the truck came, and I don't believe that it's been repainted, although it's been touched up. Uh, I put new tires on it, new exhaust, things like that. But other than that, I haven't had to do any of that real heavy lifting for restoration on this truck. I'll pop the hood if you like. Okay. And the other truck. Here we are inside the F-250. I'm going to start her up. And the way to get start this truck is you turn the key on, you turn the ignition on, and then there's a push button here, which I guess they have again now, push button start. To start her up. Not quite like that, though. Well, not quite like that. No, it's not a big red start button. Uh, but it starts up pretty good for a, for a six volt system. Pops right off. It's, it's, the cab is pretty smart. You see, there's, there's one, uh, one sunshade in here, you had to pack to get another sunshade. <laughs> this is my 1951 Dodge M37 pickup truck. Korean War era, um, three quarter ton truck made by Dodge. Very similar mechanically to the 1951 Power Wagon. Um, it's got a shorter bed and of course a boxier looking cab, but basically the drivetrain is the same thing, a 230 flathead six with a four speed gearbox and a two speed transfer case in it four-wheel drive again as well. It's a pretty Spartan vehicle. I mean, if you thought the power wagon didn't have a lot of big features in it, this guy's got even less. The seats have been recovered here. They're not the original seats. Those were all ripped up. So somebody, the guy I got it from threw some canvas over the top of the seats. It's got on an add-on turn signal unit because the truck didn't come with a turn signal. Um, real basic gear, or basic gauges. There's no key to start this thing. You flip the switch and you press on the, the starter pedal and that's how you start the thing up. Yeah, start it up. We here at Classics and Muscle Cars would just like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the Frankensteiners for letting us be a part of their show. Thank you so much.